Hi, I'm here to talk about how to be a better human, and this topic is how to eliminate things that disrupt your inner peace. And, you know, I think that uh, life is like a buffet, and if you go down the buffet line, you don't take what you don't like to eat, and you leave that there, and you take what you like to eat. And I think that's a good way to live life. And with Facebook and social media, especially Facebook, there's so much chance. It was almost designed to create tension and make people argue. And it's kind of funny that the government really runs Facebook. And uh, all these people think that, you know, their forum, but it's really not. It's just a convenient way for, uh, for a lot. Anyway, so Facebook causes me more headaches than it really is worth. It's nice to be able to talk to people, but you can do that by texting them, recalling them, or emailing. Uh, and usually without other people cutting in to say their piece. I mean, what Facebook has done has made people think there's a right and a wrong. And really, my whole philosophy of life is it takes a lot of things to make life good. And I think eliminating anything, just... It, and if you want to be on Facebook, just eliminate the people without any kind of guilt. Just block them. Just cut them out of your life, and your life will be better. There's always going to be somebody who doesn't agree with what you say. Half the time uh, <laughs> is like that. Most of the time on Facebook, because I have a unique view of the world. But on top of that, go for the things that you enjoy, that bring you happiness, that make you feel good, and the people that make you feel good, and the people that make you happy. And, uh, well, that's it for social media. Another way to, the way I live is totally not the way society dictates. I never wanted children. I never wanted the responsibility. And I never wanted to have an accidental child. So I took steps to avoid that. I had a vasectomy. Now for women, that's not an option. It takes an act of Congress pretty much to have a tubal ligation if you don't want children. And to be honest, children have ruined more women's dreams than anything else besides, well, in addition to men holding you back. And it's crazy, but I don't believe in marriage. It's a, it's a business arrangement. You know, you sign a paper you have a paper that says half of your stuff is mine when it doesn't work out. So it's predestined to not work out from the beginning to have a, a legal paper when you could just be together. And isn't that really what people think marriage is all about? It's not. If that's what it was about, you wouldn't need the ceremony. You wouldn't need the the paper, you wouldn't even need to live together. In fact, that was that probably ruins more relationships than anything by being around that same person, living with their quirks and you living with theirs, and that can cause a lot of resentment. Eliminate the resentment in your life. Cut it down to where you don't have any, and you'll be happy. 
and you'll be free. Free to choose, not feel like you're stuck in something because the law says you've got a piece of paper that you're together. When something says you must be happy, it's not ever going to work that way. I've come upon these ideas in the last 30 years because, you know, I was raised with people shoving stuff down your head. And once I realized after a while, and after I had uh, a stroke, I seemed to be going on a whole different plane like I'm not even from Earth. A lot of it has to do with going to other countries and seeing how friendly the people are to me. Now, I'm sure somebody will say, well, not all countries. No, but the countries I have been to, that is my experience. And I really enjoy that. I, you know, you can walk down the street in Amsterdam and say hi, and people say hello back. And, I mean, how basic is that? Really, one of the keys to being happy is by being open to meeting other people and greeting them and not showing any... You have no reason to dislike them until you have a reason to dislike them. I mean, that's why racists are racist. They, I don't think they have any experience with people of other cultures and other races. And it's very easy to pick out somebody with a different color skin. And it's, you know, people are afraid of what they don't know. I was lucky to have been one of the first forced integration schools in the city where they, we used to have a, an area of town in Portland where non-white people could rent, buy, or lease a place to live or have a business. They called it the black area. And it was in the North Portland area, not anywhere south of Broadway, and I think not past 15th Avenue. And nothing on the west side. In fact, people had to go across the river to a designated restaurant to eat if they were non-white. They couldn't even get a cup of coffee. Portland is supposedly known for being so, you know, accepting, and it really has a history of not. I was just talking to my mother, and she said, you know, they were afraid of black people. That's, they didn't know any. Hate comes from not having any experience with certain things, like say, let's take water. You don't know how cold the water is until you get into it and your body gets used to it. You can be afraid of water if you don't know how to swim, but you will learn. We all come from the sea. I think just accepting now, I'm excluding politics because that's what I call a topical thing where the basic thing, you, like your sexuality and your creed and your religion and your race, that's inherent. You can't change that, but you can change the rest of it. And um, I just say detach from all social uh, society bullshit and live as a basic human occupying the same space and breathing the same air as everybody else does. I would say that's a right way to live. People think I'm 
a weirdo. I don't care. I'm happy. I have friends of all kinds of people, and that's what it takes. It takes all kinds of critters to make <laughs> farmer business fritters, as I would comment from a movie I saw. But I always like that line. It takes all, all of us to make up the world. And the quicker we accept other people, just as people, all the rest is, you know, an option. Their beliefs or their, their political bullshit, which, why waste your time? Uh, you can pick a side, but I think people just like to pick a side because they're on this team and they're on that team. And, uh, you know, it, it may just be that they want people to fight so that they could enact the War Powers Act and this country can finally join the rest of the world in socio-communism where the country actually helps people rather than makes you feel inadequate if you can't help yourself. And medicine is given to you by the government. Of course, you pay some in taxes, but you don't have to buy medicines. Nobody goes bankrupt for being sick in other countries because it's not for profit. And in the countries where that happens, people aren't sick like they are in America, in the USA. I have a friend list of 5,000 in Europe. Nobody knows anyone who has had cancer and died from cancer in their families. In my circle, I know 232 people who have died, and I think 190 of them died from cancer since 1999. So maybe we'll join the world, and that might make us happy. But try to eliminate the things that make you upset and just like you do on Facebook, just block them, delete them. They're not part of your life. You don't need to try and change their mind. You never will. And don't try to get their acceptance. Go for the acceptance from people that give you that naturally. And I think you'll be happy. That's it for today right here on how to become a better human.